due to the hard working efforts of many people behind the scenes. It seems like daily there are new revelations coming out. And you know, you can have thoughts towards, um, you know, if your mum or your dad ever told you that you should be careful of the company that you keep, or you might be judged by the same uh, standards as the company you keep. Uh, <laughs> well, now on the left hand side of the screen is Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy notice, or, um, well, extract proof that he's actually an undischarged bankrupt. Giving also down the bottom here Jason Walter Bettles as his trustee. He works at Worrells. Now Art Wanazri has been the one that the liquidator actually had on file and this is why I brought up in the past videos about there always seems to be at least two people involved but one person holds the actual name on the uh, extract so they're the ones that are ultimately held responsible. Now if you look over here on the right and you see the word Worrell's partner alleged, allegedly facilitated Phoenix you might actually get confused and think is this the liquidator uh, and Vincent's or um, what? Well it seems like as I said birds of a feather flock together and if you don't want to be judged by the company you keep maybe you should also be very careful about the clients you pick because the clients you pick all seem to have a, a same similarity so just uh, this is uh, Jason Bettles. This is the man that is handling Adrian Brannock's bankruptcy. He is the listed trustee. And November last year, ATSIC came against him, took him to court because of all of his involvement and the allegations about his... Um, capacity as a liquidator for a different company a few years back and what he actually did and uh, well let's just say ATSIC have not been able to present their case very well in October the judgment that I've been reading says um, well they were pretty much told to reform everything and come back and if they can't represent what they've got, um, well, he, he won't be held accountable. <laughs> but you have to think that, well, all right, so he's been involved. He's had allegations of a, alleged facilitating phoenixing. And you've got the same accusations that have been going on against um, the liquidator of Wollumbin Horizons in that they're going to attempt to phoenix it back to members. And until the 18th of December, that was only ever an allegation. It couldn't actually be known whether it would be sold back to members or not, or whether it had been. Only with the confirmation from the liquidator that it was NCV Enterprises can it be shown to be a phoenixing maneuver and rather neatly tie them all into it too because you know they could have picked other companies member companies to do it through that would have actually made it a little bit more difficult to tie them all in but they they did it all under NCV so that's that's actually the best um, way that they could have done it short of Adrian Brennock actually putting it in his own name. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So in November 2019, there's the first appearance in court and ATSIC don't do very well. And uh, you move on to this other information because this isn't just... Uh, 
um, somebody making a complaint. This goes back to activities uh, back in 2016 and 2017, pretty much a year worth of activity that ATSIC have gone to the federal court because they pretty much want to stop Jason Bettles from being any kind of licensed liquidator or responsible for any other accounting or monies or things that really he does not appear to be doing very well at all, except they don't seem to have the evidence to back it up with because... Um, all right, so we get to the 30th of October. Worrell's partner wins round one in Atsik Phoenix fight. And it is round one because Atsik are pretty determined. At the end of the article, it finishes off with saying, you know, they may have won the battle, but they're not going to win the war. So ultimately, Atsik have got their eye on Adrian Brennock's trust, bankruptcy trustee. And it's crossed my mind to actually seek out those investigating this and see if there's any evidence of another client of Jason Bettles, whether any evidence of the activities he's helped to... Well, he's either helped or he's just so damned incompetent and useless uh, that he can't even do his job properly and he shouldn't have it anyway. I mean, the level of incompetence that would actually have to go on for it to justify how Adrian Brennock has got away with what he has can only come back to uh, the due diligence or lack of due diligence of his trustee. And I think that... Uh, when I mentioned in a previous video that this bankruptcy of Adrian Brennock's was under a debtor's petition, which meant that the trustee that's listed here is one that Adrian Brennock picked. And, you know, that uh, with all these accusations against um, Jason Bettles by ATSIC, uh, they haven't been able to prove it yet, and whether they can prove it or not, it is actually showing that the kind of behaviour that can cause these kind of allegations to come out, where whether you can prove it or not, something shonky's going on. Everybody knows it. And uh, I think the guys at ATSIC know it too, and they're just waiting for something. And so if this uh, war that they're fighting <laughs> isn't completely dependent upon the specifics of his activity within that company and that time frame within that company, then certainly his activities with handling Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy can also be brought into it and perhaps add to their case. Don't know yet. These are all things that, well, I only just found out today and I've got a few phone calls to make tomorrow to find out a few more things. So, after the uh, first round of events, Worrell's partner seeks to strike out Phoenix in case. So this is why there's a lot of circumstances where you hear about court cases, but you can't find anything out about them because they get them struck out so that you can't access that information. And uh, I've come to ex accept that now because there's quite a few that I know that went on and I cannot find hide nor hair of them. For one reason or another, they are not publicly accessible or you can't even find them publicly accessible. And what's also interesting tonight is how they've started to bring in all these, um, oh, we can't find this out because it's breaching privacy. Well, you see, a court judgment is a public document. Unless the court actually rules that it's a closed case, which needs extraordinary circumstances for that, 
um, they're all open to public scrutiny. So when you ask for details and they turn around and say, oh, well, that might breach privacy, it's like, um, how could that? Because uh, these are public cases. They are not private. These are presented in a public courtroom. Anyone could have witnessed it. So, you know, it's not like they had it all behind closed doors, which would be a different matter. And it usually, when it involves minors or victims of crime that may be under witness protection or something like that. So, Adrian Brennock's uh, bankruptcy trustee has had quite a full year since November last year He's had APSIC on his case and, um, well, even the judge said it, that uh, pretty much he considered what APSIC doing was vexatious. And the judge says that when you don't have the evidence to back up your claims. He will say that you are vexatious. So that's why I'm interpreting that they don't have enough to back up their claims against him at the moment because um, you can make the allegations, but if you can't prove them, the judge is going to turn around and say, well, you've said all these nasty things and it's just vexatious because you can't prove it. And based on that, this guy here, Jason Beddles, is trying to get it struck out because he's saying, well, they couldn't even tell me what I supposedly done wrong clearly, so, you know, it's unfair that they should even started anything against me. I am paraphrasing and putting my own interpretation on that one. <laughs> but the interesting thing was, as you're reading through this, you um, you hear that, oh, look, one of the people involved is a bankrupt. And it's kind of like deja vu. You, you, is it Adrian Brennock or is it... And it's like, no, it could be... Look... When you have got people that skirt the legal, illegal line in their profession, most of their clients are going to be ones that are doing exactly the same thing. And, you know, one case might not be enough, maybe not even two or three, but, you know, soon a whole avalanche of them comes in. And uh, before you know it, um, they can't not convict people because of the independent nature and the same allegations that have all come through that none of them could actually even come up with all of those same allegations if they even conspired to. Because based on the activities of the people involved, they've come up with a certain scenario. And the thing is that when you are dealing with people that lie and conceal everything and don't tell you the truth, you have to try and figure out what the truth is. So it's not like, oh, well, you got it wrong, so, you know, you're lying. It's like, no, we're trying to figure out what the lies are and what the truth are. So it's probably lucky for me that I've... Uh, um, I'm not on a jury because, you know, when I see a pattern of behaviour, even if all the evidence that had been presented in the past wasn't enough to convict them on, I would see that pattern as behaviour as proof in itself, in the fact that they have deliberately concealed things and made it difficult to prove anything against them. So, you know, if I was on a jury, I'd... I'd convict people like this <laughs> just simply for the amount of times they've done it that shows consistency of behaviour. And especially if it's coming from a lot of different independent people, that in itself should actually outweigh any of the lies that that person can then make up or try to make up to say, no, no, I've got all this paperwork that shows I'm right. No, all those people cannot be wrong when they all come to, well, an overall similar conclusion, they all may have varying details and reasons why they arrive at that conclusion. 
But ultimately, the conclusion is still the same. Something shonky is going on and people are getting ripped off and other people are getting rich from it and there are people, mates, helping mates. And if you're not in the mates club, well, you get ripped off and then you have all the mates gang up together because, you know, they've got accountants and lawyers and all these other people that you dare speak out, you say boo, and you're going to be shut down with whatever they can bring against you because they know how to screw people over. They've got Adrian Brennock as a friend, remember? That's one of his skills. So if any of his puppets didn't know what to do, he can tell them what to do. <laughs> Anyway, this is a short one to introduce Adrian Brennock's trustee. Doesn't look very trustworthy to me. And the courts may not have found him guilty yet, but you know what? <laughs> That's why there are people out there attempting to prove that crimes have been committed because we don't need the evidence to know. We will find it, however, to ensure the court has enough to make sure that they know what we know. And for all the people that are out there working on this right now, I am just one voice out of at least 50. And it's a great thing. You know, everybody is doing their bit. And we're all doing bits from different sides of, well, lots of different things. I mean, other people have got uh, different areas that they wanted to take on rather than what I'm taking on. And between us all, all the issues that have been raised, uh, we should be able to get these uh, NICAP on Minjimble people to actually be held account for their actions. To not hide behind what they want to say they did or behind some pretty word you know, like, seriously, you have to look at how much they use language as a weapon against all people. They're silver tongues. They've got the gift of the gab. You know, you have to start looking at the language, how they use the language to manipulate everything and everyone. They even like to tell you how to redefine what a word means. They're always doing that. You know, did you know that Aboriginal is an insult because it's Aboriginal? That's like saying abnormal. Well, actually, no, I always thought it was Aboriginal. Abba -orig Aboriginal. In other words, Abba, as in the Godhead or whatever, creation, creator, original. So creator's original. And this is why it's a generic term that is actually used to a lot of Aboriginal cultures throughout the whole world. It's not just exclusive. So, you know, these are people that are trying to redefine your understanding of words to the way they want you to look at it. Aboriginal is not an insult. It's actually a compliment. You're God's creation, you know, first creation, originals. I mean, you can't get dishonoured. That's not abnormal the way, you know, people like Adrian Brannock and Mark McMurtry and Mark Darwin, they all want to say that using that term is an insult and it's meant to put you down. It never was. The only thing that's putting you down is them and it's time you put them down and out get rid of the OSTF please you need to start getting rid of the cancer from within the tribes you have been taken over from within by a traitor don't forget that he is not who he pretends to be. And he can never, ever deliver on his promises. Tell me, has any of that money that has ever been donated to the OSTF over the years, 
there was one video where Mark Darwin said that Mark McMurtry talked and at the end of the talk everybody was coming down throwing 50s into his hand. He couldn't believe how much money people were throwing at him. Tell me, has any of that money and benefit actually come back to anything real in the communities? Or is it all just for the lawyers and the talk of the promise of the sovereignty that he says he's going to give you one day? Anyway, that's off subject. <laughs> I'm going to catch you on the next one. You take it easy. <laughs>